So do you want to get the perfect start in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, this is the video for you. This is a step-by-step -step guide of the starting hours, from character creation to getting the first few levels fast, and everything you need for a perfect party setup. This will not interfere with your choices in any way, it just provides a great platform to jumpstart your adventure however you see fit, so you're free to take on all your choices. But your first decisions already begin from the character creation, but I'm not going to go into all the specifics. The three determining factors here that are most important to building your characters are race, class, and background. So whatever decision you take, this is the place you want to take it in, and these are going to provide you all the important options to choose. Now, for the race, besides the pure aesthetics, assuming that you really like the look of one and really want to use it, otherwise the main thing to look out for are these bonuses right here beneath them. So the first ones are usually the base speed or the distance your character can travel per turn. The larger the model, the more meters it can move per turn, while something like the halflings or gnomes tend to have smaller steps, so they travel a little bit less. From here, you can get extra proficiencies with certain weapons or armor types, so they can extend the types of gear and items your class choice can normally use. For example, if you choose a dwarf, it can have additional proficiencies with battle axes or war hammers, or if you go with the elf classes, it has proficiencies with longbows, among others. Then there's also resistances. Again, depending on the theme, some can be resistant to fire, like the thieflings, Meanwhile, Elves, Half-Elves, and Drows are great at resisting charms and sleep effects. However, don't put aside the sub-races because these can change things even more, providing additional passives, but many of them can also have unique active abilities that you cannot get otherwise. So look at what your class does, what you plan to build it like, and then, yeah, make the selection of the race you want to complement it with. It's odd that it's the race that starts first and not the class, but it's going to help you a bit better to make your decision. Now, I already covered on a full breakdown of the starting classes, so for more details, you can just refer back to that video. But one thing important here is going to be the class ability, or what we call in other video games, our main stat. So it can be either strength for melee, dexterity for the more agile classes like rogues, rangers, and monks, or wisdom and or intellect for classes that are spellcasters. But typically you'll want to boost this stat first so that you can deal more damage with the abilities that use these stats and also have better ability check rolls when that happens. But you don't want to neglect some of the other stats either, like for example dexterity is great at preventing you from being the dead last in turn when it comes to using your abilities. So you don't want to be the dead last that does that. Maybe invest a few points into dexterity too as you level up. Maybe even constitution to help you a bit with surviving. Also, you will mostly not want odd numbers for your main ability or main stat either, since ability checks gain a bonus every two levels past level 10. So there's really no benefit in having an odd number, like for example having 17 strength is not going to make a bit of a difference compared to having just 16. Instead, either invest that single point into a different stat or wait until you have two and you can go to 18 or the next even number. The final ones are going to be the background. Now, any class or race can choose any background, but some will fit better than others depending on what you're going with. So these effects on the proficiencies that you get mostly affect conversations and sometimes ability checks, but they can also have gameplay outcomes too. So say you have the intimidation from the soldier background. Well, this lets you be a lot more convincing in dialogues and as such open up a completely new kind of ending for certain conversations with certain characters, maybe even avoid fights entirely. But others like athletics and stealth can have a combat gameplay purpose. So stealth, for example, helps you to remain undetected a lot better and the thief or a monk can make great use of it. High levels of athletics help you jump much further, but can also help to have a higher chance to shove others if you want to throw them off cliffs or avoid being shoved yourself. Also, sleight of hands can help you steal easier if you want to just grab items without being noticed. Perception lets you detect traps and other obscure things when you navigate the environment so you can open up secret areas. The point is, you can enhance the theme of the class you're going with as well as the race as the background is what complements it at the final stage. But you've made your character, you're on the mothership escaping, the next step is about gaining a few quick levels in just the starting minutes. 
So this can help a ton to unlock more passive abilities, buff your stats, even gain access to powerful subclasses as you can reach level 3 in no more than half an hour. So for this you will want to defeat the boss at the end of the prologue mothership. Normally the game encourages you to flee here, but there are a few ways to make it simple even after the changes from the early access. The one I used involved picking up all the Nettiloid tanks you can find in this room. There are three in total, as well as the room prior to this. So four in total that you can just set in a circle around this boss. Now, my suggestion is to wait until it has towards 50 HP. Otherwise, you just wipe the Mind Flayer, but the boss still stands. But once around 50, get your characters close to the other side and light this whole area up. Should the boss survive, slap him once on the cheeks and also make sure to grab the really strong weapon that it drops. By the way, I also made a video today that further explains some of the best early on weapons to get, so totally check that too. But a few other tips to help you here to make this easier is to ensure that Shadowheart survives this entire attempt, otherwise you can permanently lose her if your entire party fails or if you enter the cutscene without her. Second, if you previously grabbed the brain, you can use it as a distraction for the incoming patrol. Just keep it in the big room before the boss and they will waste multiple turns trying to reach us, but instead you're going to be in the other room and taking care of the boss. So by then, it's going to be long gone. Once you reach the B2 level, this should ensure that you get at least level 2 and already set yourself up to jump straight to level 3 with both your main character as well as all the future party mates. From here on, it's time to assemble your party. I'm not sure if any of the companions can be fully missed, but just to make sure, go ahead and grab them like this. So after making your way to the crashed ship, defeat the enemies and go to the western exit. Here you will find Asterion. He is an awesome rogue, a very entertaining companion, so you should definitely have him in your party. From this point on, go right through the ship again on the upper level and complete any dialogue option you might see here, but then go on to the other side, on to the right, and grab the wizard Gale from the opened portal. He is an amazing nuker and something you'll want to have in your party in any situation. From this point on, it's time to find and rescue Lysel, which is just a bit up the same road that you just took, so go a bit up north and eventually you're going to find her fallen in a trap. Now it's a matter of choice how you want to act here, but once she's down, you can either get her in your party or send her at the camp. Now I chose to keep her in my party since fighters are a god tier class, but you will have to send somebody instead before this, so in my case I chose to send the rogue back to my camp. Now from this point on, there are a couple of routes that you can take, either follow the main mission and go to the Druid Grove in search for a healer, or check out the Dank Crypt right next to you. It doesn't matter which one you pick first, but you should know that there is another missable character that can provide you with the class reset and revive mechanic in your camp if you go to the Crypt instead. So if you take it to the right side after saving Lazel, you'll want to reach the crypt, which more or less already has a bunch of thieves running about, so again, it's your choice how you want to deal with them. Now to enter a bit quicker, you can just drop this massive suspended rock on the almost broken floor downstairs and then just jump to get in. But once here, you'll want to make your way inside all the way down to the lower crypt area, though there are some enemies on the way, so do keep that in mind. In this large room with the big doorways, I suggest taking your first turn to the right side into the sarcophagus room. There are four tombs here you can open, with one of them of the two right here on the right side holding a very important soul coin. So you will need that for later, grab it and make sure you don't trigger any traps, that is why I recommend trying to not go beneath this archway and instead take the adjacent routes. Also open up the one in the middle as this is going to give you a pretty interesting weapon as well as the key for the next section. However, keep in mind that this will immediately activate the traps if you haven't disabled them, so run for your life. Once you're out of danger, you can simply go to the opposite side, open the final room and I also suggest making a quick save just in case something goes horribly wrong before this. Now this is when you'll want to go to the back of this room and there's going to be a secret button you can press on to this left side that will open up a doorway towards a final sarcophagus. So inside of it you're going to find this character named Withers and you can actually bring him to your camp. Now I chose the dialogue option number 4, each life is of infinite value, however I think that picking any other option can also work and 
he will eventually make his way to your camp anyway. But otherwise, he is the main NPC that you use to reset your skills, your class if you want to. In case you don't like the choices that you've used, you can go back to them, pay 200 gold, and then respec into something else or if you want to test things out. Also, if you don't have any Revivify scrolls to resurrect your party mates, you can just use this NPC, pay the fine, and they will bring them back to you right away, even if they fell in the biggest chasm. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to also loot his tomb so that you can get the second soul coin from him. It's going to be important, so why not? If you did everything right, by this point you should already be hitting level 3, which means you gain access to a lot of powerful abilities for your entire party. It can be something like Action Surge for Lazel, Devastating Shatters and Cloud of Daggers for Gale, and even access to certain subclasses depending on what choice of class you have. Now, eventually, you're going to want to make your way to the Druid Grove, as this is the main way to not just progress the story, but also to get introduced to a number of important characters, as well as one more companion. So his name is Will, he is a really cool warlock, and you can find him inside right here. Once you help the Druids clear out the invading forces, he is going to be training, well, a bunch of children in combat, I guess. Maybe he's not such a good person, but you can definitely recruit him and send him back at your base nonetheless. And he's also a very strong warlock. Eventually, at higher up levels, he can get some very powerful abilities that can debuff entire groups of enemies, slow them down, and provide a ton of AoE and high damage. But besides him and, of course, completing the main story in this location, there's one more thing you should do here, and that is to make your way back at the entrance and take this road all the way up at the top of this hill. So it's going to be a bit of a longer drive over there, but eventually you're going to reach this character named Bugbear. So you will have to help her as she's getting ambushed, and once you do that, she's going to give you yet another soul coin, the third one right here, which you can grab right away. Now, obviously, there are many more soul coins that you can find randomly scattered, but they can also fetch a nice profit at most vendors if you want to sell them. However, I would keep them as they are related to a final companion named Karlach. So you can recruit her a little bit later once you complete the devil mission up north right here at the Risen Road. You will just have to do the mission that also gives you the Sword of Justice. Again, I covered that in today's video, so you can check the video about all the early on items that you should get anyway. But once you finish that side quest and assuming that you also recruit her as your companion, you can make your way to the ground floor of the same house that you just have been into and you can find another coin over there, a fourth soul coin in one of the boxes inside. Now, what are these soul coins good for? Well, they essentially turn Karlach into Super Karlach. If you place these in her inventory, you can then consume that with her and basically gain an Infernal Fury condition for every soul coin that you consume. These will last until a long rest, but they provide a very potent damage on top. So with this, her entire body gets engulfed in ever-raging flames and her attacks, including with both weapons as well as when unarmed, will deal an additional 1 to 4 fire damage when she is raging. And the buff also triggers if her HP drops below 25%, but she is a barbarian, so you can just use her rage ability to basically enter rage mode and almost constantly benefit from this power. And that is pretty much it. You now have a full-on party, you have all the characters and companions unlocked, you also have withers to reset your class if you want to, and you also gain some nice levels and quite a bit of loot to get you started and get very strong super early. For everything else, you can check some of my other guides, including the full class breakdown I made before, as well as the beginner's guide that you can check that is also up on the channel. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.